Good morning. I praise God for this opportunity that we can gather together in the sanctuary and worship Him in person, and also those who are worshiping from their homes. What a beautiful day. It's sunny, bright, but a little cold and windy, but we take it. No rain, no snow. It's easy to drive and come to church on this Sunday morning. Psalm 100 is one of the favorite psalms for everyone. I want to read the entire this psalm. It's only five verses. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Please join me as we sing together him joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Let this be our response to who God is. God is good and God is faithful. Thank you for being a God who is good to us, a God who is faithful in all his promises. We thank you that you give us this opportunity to respond to your goodness and to your faithfulness. We ask that you send your spirit into our lives and into our worship this morning, so that by the power of your spirit we may be your witnesses. I thank you for each person who has gathered in this sanctuary and all those who are in their homes. Give us a sense of unity as your children, as members of the same family of God, and strengthen and empower us as we worship you this morning. And open our minds, open our hearts to hear your word, both read and preached to us this morning. We pray all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power forever. Amen. <clears throat> Once again, I greet you all for being here, worshiping God in person, and also welcome all those who are worshiping God from their homes. We, we start our uh, Sunday mornings with prayer and fellowship, although we cannot do much of the latter, but we know that we are here for one another. I have a couple of uh, announcements to make. First, I want to congratulate ourselves and congratulate each other. Now we have a new president and we have a new vice president. We have a new cabinet. And we read in the word of God in the letter of Romans, it says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities for the authorities that exist have been established by God. Do what is right and you will be commanded. It's our responsibility to pray for our authorities, for the president, vice president, cabinet, and all those who are involved in making this nation uh, a unified nation and that there is healing among different factors. We resume our Sunday church services both in person and stream live on the church Facebook. And I know that many of us are following the church uh, from their homes, uh, from the church fa Facebook. I want to thank you for following the reopening guidelines. I want us to pray for our church members, especially for those who are infected by the coronavirus. I will not mention them, we know some of them. Please continue to pray for them, pray for peace, pray for healing, for recovery, and for normalcy in these people's lives and in their homes. Let us pray for the safety and unity of our nation, also for the safety and unity of Armenia and Artsakh as well. This coming Thursday, we will have our prayer meeting on Thursday, January 28th at 8 o'clock. Please do join us in this via Zoom. It will be an encouragement for those who are attending. The church directory has been updated. Uh, you may have take your copy home from the Vartex. And for more announcements, please see the Sunday folder. I'm happy to welcome James Boyajan with us this morning. He is our new joint youth uh, leader. He will come forward to say a few words, introduce himself, so that those people who are watching from their homes know who James is. Please, James. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Badrelli. Uh, that's very nice. Uh, I'm happy to introduce myself. It's great to be here in person. I'm coming to AMC and FAC, you know, alternating the weeks. Um, I'm super excited to be working with the youth. It's the best job I ever had. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, if you don't know me, I used to work at Camp Otterville, or I still currently do, technically. I was a counselor and I've been activities director for the past two years. Um, I love teaching kids. I love introducing them to the Bible and different parts of scripture and playing fun games with them and stuff. Um, but most importantly, especially during these very troubling times for us and our youth, uh, deepening their relationship with Jesus Christ and really learning who God is and God's plan for them. So uh, thank you, Badrelli. Thank you to the community. Thank you for letting me speak and address you guys. Um, I'm excited for the work that we have to do. Literally today at 4 p.m. we have youth group. So I hope to see most of the youth there. It's, uh, it's meeting virtually for now, but we're hopefully going to roll out a safe way to meet in person um, in the coming weeks. So thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you uh, for having me. Thank you for having me as your youth director. I'm so excited and ecstatic uh, to be in this role and to help out in this way. Welcome. Thank you guys. We thank, we thank God for uh, James, and we appreciate his uh, enthusiasm working with our youth and would like to pray for him and for his ministry in our midst.
This Tuesday, the women will be starting uh, their uh, Pater's Fellowship by reading this book. It's Waiting on God by Charles Stanley. It's a fantastic book. It's a book that every Christian should read and study and spend time together. So this Tuesday at 7 o'clock, the Pater's will be gathering to study uh, this book. They will be reading the first chapter for this Tuesday and have some discussions. Uh, you, if you can join, please do so. If you cannot encourage someone else to join. This morning, the, the Armenian passage is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 to 12. This is 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 to 12. Uzem Gartal, Arachin Tuch Petrosi Yerot Tulochem, Hamarmer Utem Basle Yerko. Amenket Mehmet Hebraire, Karegitz. Yerpayrasher <laughs> Kachsratzen <laughs> Havanapalbachara <laughs> Anons Arjekin Gantratarman. Mitchell Mutian, Yemir Panutian, Parik Nere, who was in Sen. Isus is out. Amen Dun, Irenten Pajnovats, Chigernar has that Kenan. Amen Dun, Irenten Pajnovats, Chigernar has that Nanan. Isusi Hoske, Leselu Vorkan Bethunik. Temer ans nagan gankin mech, yev temer halakagan gankin mech. Pait in chu miyutyuna yev miyapanutyuna aiska na agajeshtem. Agajeshtem, vorovedev miyan yev miyutyan yev miyapanutyan mechenk. Ait chamanak anuts megats parik nere gabayrenk. Merki chalachva gartatsan tsukrayn hamar nere mech. Petros Arakal, Iren Terzoneru, Mesete, Anon, Iren, Ansnagam, Hokebor, Yanki, Mech, Bidi Mitzlan, Yevanjin. Mian, Yev, Mek Matkivra. Angese, Te Iren Terzonera, Bidi Mitzlan, Bidi Archin, Baimanav, Vor Mek Matkivra. Yamian, Yev, Mek Matkivra, Anon, Galaxi. Yer Pairaser, Vor Mat, Yer Katsaparo Bidela. Inch Keratsik had put him there in a song. Garet Garegit, Yer Pairaser, Vor Mat, Yer Katsaparo. Ayo Arakel and Hosim, your poor Harapel to Nerun Massin. Borom Mistal Hest Gam Turinchem. And a servizet a male and snakam Hokebor Yankin Mitch. Yet Hasun Yev Ajatzelak Ait Jamanak Sutskudan for Amenkas Meg Matki Rai Meg Messi Metabes with the Oknek and Meg Messi Ice Hasunella Hasun Urim Imansnagan Hokebo Yankis Mech Ajatzem Te Derkari Mechem Anger the Lagner Anselmet Yet that's a make me the heart's neck. Percheres, Iman's Nagan, Okeborg Yankees match, Volkan Metsa. Volkan, 
agenția. Hai să arțunere în vezi de la încă stațiune. Să gândesc arțunere, acea mic mezi de arțunere lui Ic. Vorbesc că e plan că ne-a înțelegat, nu că vorbea încă nici pe scarge vorbesc. Nici pe scarge vorbesc. Mersul ce naim, uriștere când la tadel, anunță hanere în matmaneșel și a tirune. Ai te octagar, te sub crain, iefte cristune a gânce. În tagara, în meng, tu ne ies, mer la snagam o chevor de achim, meci meci la lui, e agelul hanar ceancă ne lui, vorbesc să ai pe pohara pe tine nu meci, care n-a meci la lui. Astăzi, e vastă ce o să-i vedeți, jama mea ca să mă lueg. Vorbesc să-i vedeți, astăzi o modena, astăzi o nămanec, astăzi o să-i gata loc, am avut să ne lese lu varjoming. E anchea la ce vor trebui. Cu ce mă lueg, nu vei la el. Nelson Mandela e de anchea. Că s-a miot, e garda în el. Pandar de Belehedu. Ir Yerkin Aracin Jogor Tagan, Democratic Kebeyon de Dorvon Bahakar Atarza. Yerk Nobel Haabutian, Mercenag Yen Ajanaza. Mercenag de Ir Yerkin, Vercin Germagamort Bahakarinet Pajbet. Ir Abes Hasun Martma. Vor am poți așa în suistă, va fi ir ier gire, e din jo multă în viață de lui e gazer. E voci de pașmelu. Mergea mâna cu o dacă o țin. Astăzi o, e astăzi o hoschine, mergea mâna ca să merg. Vorbesc în mera, în snagan, în ochi, în ghianchi, în veci, a ging. E mec pe tribra. E la un care ghiț, e pe aia ser. Vor mați el ca să vă pară o mancă. Vă e mort mețez, a avut în chimia asta. A venit la gana să vați, mă vei mă vor hai vreo parcă, dar că zic că o hoschit hamar. Vor mai zic suiți cu dară, că te la trei, că vreau de vire. Te inci în eluie, că mergi, ați năgăm, ok, vor că închim, mergi, 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 mergi. E vici vez, mergi, 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 mer Ordnek u hoskët, jë ordnek me zme amrin megës. Ku kam kit hamacajnë, ashe e gërë nërë në lavo. Isus Kristus i janë mëvë ka vëtëk. Amen. Let us sing together, my faith looks up to thee.
Let us pray together. Most gracious God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for being a God who is good and he shares his goodness with his children. We thank you for your faithfulness that you teach us how faithful you are in all your promises and how you call on us, on each one of us, to be faithful as you are faithful. We thank you for this sunny Sunday morning, a day to look up and see your marvelous deeds as the creator of the entire universe and help us to see how unimportant and insignificant creatures are we. But thank you for coming to us because you are God of love, mercy and compassion. Thank you for sacrificing your son Jesus so that by faith through him we may have, we may have life and have abundant life. We congratulate ourselves for now having a new president, a new vice president, a new cabinet, and thank you for asking us to be subject to the governing authorities and want us to do what is right. That's what you command us. We pray this morning for our church members, especially those who are infected by the coronavirus. We know how difficult this is, how much they are isolated from their loved ones. We ask that you extend your healing hand and heal each one of them. And remember each member by your mercy and compassion and make yourself felt to us through your spirit and give us a sense of unity and help us to grow in our personal spiritual life so that its fruit may be seen to those who are around us. We pray for the unity of our nation, also the unity of Armenia and Artsakh, and all the trouble that they are facing these days. We thank you for James Boyajian, for him to be our new joint youth leader. We ask your blessings on him. We ask that you guide him as he works with the youth, and leads them to a deeper personal relationship with Jesus. I thank you for the women's ministry as this Tuesday will be starting their study and discussions by the book Waiting on God by Charles Stanley. May the reading and discussion of this book bring blessing on every person who is meeting and participating and help them to grow and let others grow with them. Continue to pour your blessings on us this morning as we once again we read your word and listen to your sermon. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our English scripture lesson this morning is taken from the Gospel of John chapter 1 and the reading is verses 35 to 42. Last Sunday, we started a new sermon series on the individual characters of those that are mentioned in the Gospel of John and not mentioned in the other three Gospels. So today's reading is from John, chapter one, beginning from verse 35. The next day, John the Baptist was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teachers, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon 
and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Let me ask you a question. When I ask you to picture the disciples, whose name comes to your mind first? Peter, right? Andrew's name does not come to your mind first, does it? Andrew is not the most famous or the most recognized disciple. But still, his life teaches us some important lessons. Today's message is for those who do not feel that they are important or are famous, or are the most recognized. Today's message is for ordinary people. So if you feel ordinary about yourself, this message is for you this morning. First, let's see what type of a person was Andrew. Andrew's name gives us an indication of what type of a person he was. In Greek, literally, his name means manly. From everything we know of him, he was a man's man. He was, in other words, down-to-earth person, not proud of his achievements or of his belonging. He was down-to-earth person. He was from Galilee. And many times the Galileans were the uneducated people. He was a fisherman with his brother Peter. He was an ordinary person. He was not the most well-known disciple. At least, he was not the most extraordinary person. When Jesus chose his first disciple, he did not choose somebody who is recognized, or very significant. He chose an ordinary person who communicated a lot more by what he did than what he said. Here is a question for you. What kind of a person are you? Are you the type of person Jesus chooses? Second, what was Andrew most famous for? He was most famous of his brother. Every time, even in today's passage, we read Andrew's name, it says, Andrew, Peter's brother. There are four lists of the disciples in the Gospels. Every time, Peter is listed first. Peter was extraordinary. Andrew, by contrast, was an ordinary person. Peter always seemed to be in the spotlight. Andrew always seemed to be in the shadows. What an encouragement. You do not have to be the first or the most famous for Jesus to choose you. Jesus chooses ordinary people like Andrew, ordinary people who do not mind being in the shadows. Jesus chooses us not because of our capability, but because of our availability. Here is another question. If Jesus calls you today to follow him and be his disciple, would you follow him? Would you be his disciple? And third, what type of encounter did Andrew have with Jesus? Andrew, before becoming a follower of Jesus, he was a follower of John the Baptist. When Andrew, Andrew encountered Jesus, he left everything and followed him, spent that afternoon and night with Jesus. And by doing so, he encountered Jesus personally, one on one and his life was changed forever. His life was not the same anymore. Another question, what about you? 
Are you in need of a fresh encounter with Jesus? And finally, four, what was the first thing Andrew did after his encounter? As we mentioned earlier, Andrew was always introduced as Peter's brother. And now he has had this life transforming encounter with Jesus. For once, Andrew can be first. He can have his own identity, make a name for himself. But that's not Andrew. When Andrew encountered Jesus, the first thing he did, the first thing he did was to go find his brother Peter and say to him, we have found the Savior. It was crucial for Andrew that his brother Peter meets Jesus. Think about Paul and Peter's response for a moment. Andrew is coming to tell his brother he has found the Savior. How did Peter respond? When Andrew spoke, Peter listened. Peter did not ask questions. He listened to his younger brother. This tells us something about Andrew. This tells us that Andrew was a person that you can rely on his words. Think of all the influence and impact of the life and ministry of Peter. All of that was made possible because of the influence of his brother Andrew had on him. It was Andrew who introduced Peter to Jesus. Without Andrew, we would never, we would never have had Peter. Alex Haley, author of the book Roots, once said, if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know that he had some help. If you see a turtle on a fence post, you know that he had some help. So the first thing Andrew did after his encounter with Jesus was to go and tell his brother Peter about Jesus. You may think that telling others about Jesus is the last thing you can do as a Christian. With Andrew, it was the most natural thing he could do. He encountered Jesus spent some time with him and could not help but go and tell his brother about his encounter with Jesus and bring him to Jesus. Please listen. Did you notice that Andrew did not convince his brother himself? He just brought his brother to Jesus and had Jesus deal with him. Sometimes that's exactly what we have to do. Just bring someone to Jesus. And mind you, this was not the only time Andrew brought someone to Jesus. We read about Andrew three times in the Gospel of John. The next time we encounter Andrew is the, in the account of Jesus feeding the 5,000. 5,000 have come out to hear Jesus teach and it was getting late, and they had no food to feed everyone. What do we see Andrew do in this account? He does the same thing. He brings someone to Jesus. This time, he brings a small boy to Jesus, who had five loaves of barley bread and two fish. The last time we see Andrew in the in, is in John chapter 12, where Jesus was nearing the end of his earthly ministry and he was in Jerusalem. Notice that Philip, another disciple of Jesus, does not know what to do with the Greeks who are asking to see Jesus. And who does Philip go to in that moment? Does he go to Peter? I don't think so. Does he go to James? I don't think so. Does he go to John? I don't think so. 
he goes to he goes to Andrew. And once again, Andrew brings these people to Jesus. This was Andrew, the disciple who had one, only one talent. And that one talent was to bring someone to Jesus. What about you and what about me? What are we doing with our talent? How are we using our talent? It's not important how many talents God has given us. One, two, three, five, ten, twenty. It's not important. The only important thing is that we use our talent. I don't have one talent. What did he do? All we need to do is spend time with Jesus and use our talent. Tell someone about our encounters with Jesus. If Jesus has met your need, then tell someone who has a need. If Jesus has answered your prayers, tell someone that when you prayed, Jesus answered your prayers. If you have encountered Jesus and been saved and changed by him, tell someone about the change. If someone brought you to Jesus, bring someone to Jesus too. Here is a true story. In 1934, Someone by the name Albert, a 24-year-old farmer, became Christian. He was so full of enthusiasm that he filled a truck with people and took them to a meeting to hear about Jesus. There was a good-looking farmer's son who Albert especially wanted to get to, meet, to the meeting. But this young man, was difficult to persuade. He did not seem too interested in Christianity. Eventually, Albert managed to persuade him to come by asking him to drive the truck. When they, drive, when they arrived, Albert's guest decided to go in and find himself, quote unquote, fascinated by the teaching from the Bible. He began to have thoughts he had never known before. He went back each night to the meetings to hear more until one night he went forward and gave his life to Jesus. Since that day, that young truck driver has spoken to at least 250 million people about Jesus and become the spiritual advisor to many U.S. Presidents. The young truck driver was, of course, maybe you have guessed it, it's Billy Graham. There is probably not another Billy Graham, but every one of us can be an Albert. We can all talk to a friend about Jesus and bring him or her to Jesus. Therefore, Never underestimate what God can do through you if you just use, yes, your one talent. Billy Graham has become a household name. He wrote books and preached sermons and brought thousands to Jesus. But there are the ordinary people, the unknown farmer, the little brother, who bring Billy Graham and Peter to Jesus. They quite often get all the attention and all the recognition. But when Jesus wanted to choose his disciples, his first disciple that he chose was, was Andrew. 
We cannot be Billy Graham. We are not meant to be Billy Graham. We are meant to be who we are. God has called us to be who we are. We cannot be Peter either. We are not meant to be Peter. We do not have his personality or his talents. We just need to be who we are and what we can do with the one talent that God has given to us. We cannot be Billy Graham, we cannot be Peter, but we can be an Andrew, the one talent disciple. We can encounter Jesus. We can accept his invitation to follow him and be his disciple. We can use our one talent, bring someone to Jesus and be the one talent disciple like Andrew. So therefore, let us never underestimate the lasting impact or the influence we may have on someone who needs to go to Jesus. All we need to do is to use our one talent and bring someone to Jesus. So let us do not miss the chance. Let us look around. Let us see if there is someone we can bring to Jesus. I want to encourage us, those who are here and those who are in their homes, to use our talents. As I said earlier, it is not important how many we have, even if we have one talent. The best thing we could do is put it in use. Let's do it. Let's pray together. Most gracious God, our Heavenly Father, what an inspiring example Andrew is to us. He did not look at his talent and said he is not as talented as his brother. But with the, old, with the one talent that he had, he made a huge difference in his brother's lives. Help us to never underestimate the power of the one talent that we put in use. Help us to do so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing together, Brightly beams our Father's mercy. Brightly beams our Father's mercy From His lighthouse evermore But to us He gives the keeping Of the lights along the shore Let the lower lights be burning Send a gleam across the wave Some poor fainting, struggling seamen You may rescue, you may save Dark the night, our sin has settled Loud the angry billows roar Eager eyes are watching, longing for the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the wave. Some poor fainting, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save. Trim your feeble lamp, my brother. Some poor sailor tempest-tossed, trying now to make the harbor in the darkness may be lost. Let the lower lights be burning Send a gleam across the wave Some poor fainting, 
struggling seamen you may rescue you may save let us all stand and sing the hymn Zico Yarkai Jum Yevzor Jum Yevtar Kavitiades Kavitiades Amen. Dere Ordnetzes Yevahetzes Dere Yutemke Baitzanatsunetzer Vra Yevbohormitzes Dere Yeriades Vertsunetzer Vra Yevchavahotunatzes And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and always. Thank you.